This is Neil Patwari. I'm going to talk in this segment about how complex baseband isn't really that complicated. We've already talked about how in QAM we're going to represent v0 of t as square root of 2 times p of t times the cosine at omega naught t. We've talked about another basis function phi 1 of t as being minus square root of 2 p of t sine of omega naught t. And we represent our symbol constellations as a list of vectors sm with an amplitude am of 0 and am of 1 for little m from 0 to m minus 1. And in the time domain, our mth symbol in the time domain is am0 times phi of 0 of t plus am1 times phi 1 of t. And this is where we're going to start to talk about why what complex baseband is and how we can use it to represent our symbols. So let's plug in phi 0 of t and phi 1 of t. Okay, so I just plug in the cosine and the sine terms with the amplitudes of square root of 2 and minus square root of 2 in the pulse shape. And then I'll simplify. Here I simplified by pulling the square root of 2 and the p of t out. And I'm going to remind you of some terms that you've learned that a complex exponential e to the j omega naught t is the cosine at omega naught t plus j times the sine at omega naught t. And we have this operator called the real operator, and that takes just the real part out of the complex value that we've written, so in this case the omega naught t. But if we want the imaginary part, we would write the real of j times e to the j omega naught t, and that would be j multiplied by both of these. The j squared would be minus 1, and then the signed part would be left as the real part that gets pulled out of the real operator. So what we're going to do is we're going to write sm of t again with a real operator. And when I take the real part of the e to the j omega naught t in this part, I'm going to get a uh, cosine term, and that's going to be what I had up here. And when I take the real part of the j times am1 times e to the j omega naught t, I'm going to have a minus times the sine part at omega naught t, so this term up here. And what we're simply going to do is we're going to call this part S sub m complex baseband. It's now a complex value. We're going to call that complex value a m0 plus j times a m1. So it's a single complex value that now we can write. So we have our what we would call just our normal symbol in the time domain. That would be the band pass what we refer, refer to now as our time domain signal. This term, which we're calling our complex baseband, and that complex baseband, it's very much like our vector sm, which was written as am0 and am1 as a two-dimensional vector, except now we're writing it as a complex value that has a real and an imaginary part. And so we're also going to call this real part the in phase, and we're going to call this imaginary part the quadrature. These are the same as the AM0 and the AM1, respectively. It's just another way to look at having a two-dimensional vector. And you can think of them as being equivalent. We'll say, um, uh, we'll use these terms to kind of name our two dimensions, but we'll also you'll also see in other books complex baseband notation used much more extensively than 
we will in this course, this is what they're talking about. They're not talking about anything different. They're just talking about representing this two-dimensional vector SM in a complex plot rather than in a general, generic two-dimensional plot.